Hey guys! Uh, after last week's studio tour, I figured I'd try a different uh, point of view for some of these vlog videos and see if this works. Um, you get to see exactly how messy my desk is on any particular given day. Um, today's video is sort of a continuation of a rant that I stopped myself from having about a month ago. Um, I want to talk about work-life balance and following your dreams and how I think that's all kind of BS. Um, a lot of people talk about following your dreams as if you need to find a career that fits what your, you know, your passion is. Like you find something that you're passionate about and then you get a career in that. It's that whole concept of um, love what you do and never work a day in your life. But I think that kind of is unrealistic for a lot of people and really not what my temperament I think I don't think I would be happy doing that um, the way I see it it's more like do what you love and then what you love becomes work um, and I personally much prefer to have a um, a balance where I have a job that like I don't mind, it's fine, I enjoy what I do, but it's not my passion, it never has been. Um, it's just a nine to five job. I'm actually still hourly, uh, even though it's full time, which makes it even better because basically, um, I'm only obligated to be there for eight hours and then I leave and then I come home and that's where my life happens. My life happens at home where I have my hobbies and my interests, I have this YouTube channel, I do, you know, knitting, I, uh, volunteer with the church, I spend time with my family, um, and all of the things that make me me are things that I do outside of office hours. And what I do for a career is not part of my identity really at all. It's probably not even applicable for me because my hobbies wouldn't really make great careers anyway. Um, you know, I knit so I could start like an Etsy shop, but that's really hard to make a living off of, you know. Um, this YouTube thing, you know, maybe, maybe it'll hit off and I'll be able to, you know, support our family with YouTube, but I don't, um, while that might be like a pipe dream, it's not a goal that I'm like working towards with any kind of deadline because I don't think that's reasonable. Um, and my degree is actually in languages. Um, and so I had planned all along to, um, like do work as a translator, not a interpreter live, but translated like on paper. But um, the, the problem with that is that I was so focused on the academic <laughs> aspects of getting into college in the first place and then passing my courses that no one ever told me until I was ready to graduate that most translation jobs are freelance. And I find searching for work itself to be so stressful that the idea of searching for work every day of my life for the rest of my life just sounds like something that is it's a non-starter I would never be interested in that kind of a career and so I'm much happier uh, with the job that I have that doesn't even use my degree but allows me to have like just a paycheck every other week and it's the same amount every other week and I'm able to just sort of live my life peacefully outside of those eight hours a day this all came up in the first place when I was doing, uh, reading, G getting things done by David Allen and sort of talking about some of my thoughts uh, during my September videos. And um, one thing about that book that kept rubbing me the wrong way was this sort of assumption that, um, that you needed to be working on work stuff at all hours of the day and all days of the week. Um, and sort of that assumption that I think certain companies might sort of have that um, that your job is your life, especially if you are a um, non-exempt salary, you know, uh, which fortunately, like I said, I'm not. So I basically, I have my hours and then I go home and I'm not working and I've never asked to like work on something over the weekend. Um, but if I were, I think that would really bother me a lot. Um, my husband's last job was a little bit more that way and his current job has a much healthier view of the whole work-life balance and they don't let him stay too late uh, if he needs to, you know, get caught up. He just, they just see the value more of him being rested 
going home, getting a full night's sleep, enjoying his time not at work, and then coming back refreshed the next day, rather than forcing him to stay super late like his previous job was, which I really appreciate, you know, as the wife, of course, um, but also just like, I'm also an employee, and I prefer that kind of a mentality of sort of a boss who realizes that he's not your life, he's not your wife, he is not, um, you know, what you love to do 24-7. Um, you know, I never quite got the concept of a dream job. People would ask me, what's your dream job? And I've never really had an answer. You know, for a while I was saying that I wanted to do translation, um, but most of that was because... So part of this is just the way that career advice is doled out to high schoolers. The best I got was, why don't you major in your favorite subject? My favorite subjects were foreign languages, and so that's what I studied. Um, and it was a great experience. I enjoyed everybody in my program, my professors, my classes. I got to study abroad, which is amazing. Um, but besides all that life experience, it's not something that I'm doing as a career because I was never told how to turn it into a career and whether it was the kind of career that I liked. I think it's much more important to like your work environment than to be doing something that you enjoy studying. You know, you can put up with studying something that you don't like. You know, if maybe you don't like math, but your ideal work environment involves math, you can put up with studying it for, you know, four years and then you have the environment that you like. And so it's more important to consider things like, do you prefer working alone or in groups? Uh, do you like open floor plans or, you know, cubicles or offices? Or do you want to be, you know, managing a team? Or do you prefer to be, you know, just doing your thing day in, day out, same stuff every day? Do you prefer to be creative? Those are the kinds of questions that I think are much more important than what subject you want to major in. And I was never really given that point of view of, like, even just the, the point of view of studying for a career instead of studying for a major. Um, and if I were to go back and do it all over again, I would definitely consider the career I want before the major I chose, and maybe even take a year off out of high school um, to sort of figure that out for myself, because, you know, I'm, I'm happy with where I am, uh, regardless of what degree I got and whether or not I'm using it. Like, I'm, I'm really happy because I'm not identifying myself by my job. I'm identifying myself by my hobbies. Um, I really enjoy spending my time you know, doing my crafting stuff, doing my YouTube videos on myhogwarts.com where I almost treat that as a job. Like I'm able to treat my hobbies, take them as seriously as I would take a job because I have that time. Um, and you know, I'm, I stick to a YouTube schedule. I have a very strict like uh, my Hogwarts schedule where I get certain things done every week and whatever because I'm like held accountable, but only by my friends. I'm not getting paid for that. Um, and I think that's the freedom I wouldn't have if I were chasing some hypothetical dream job that maybe required more work than it's worth. Also, I think it's also the glorification of money, you know, that you work harder for a higher paying job. Um, you know, I think there's a point at which money can buy happiness, but after that point, it really can't. And only a fulfilling life of you know, having hobbies and interests and just a family that loves you and a home that you can feel happy and relaxed in is more important um, than all of that. But none of this is to knock people who do know what they want to do and who are pursuing entrepreneurial pursuits or, you know, that hypothetical dream job. If you know exactly what you want and if it's something that you love to do, then by all means, that's amazing. Um, I'm just saying that it's not me and I think it's not a lot of people but some of the people who it's not for are still being given that advice to go find your passion and make your job your passion or make your passion your job and if it's not a good fit it's not gonna happen and you're just gonna end up being frustrated so I guess my advice if you want it is um, if you have a dream job already or if you have something you're working towards as a goal that's fantastic but if you're finding other people's goals uh, be, you know, pressuring you into looking for something that you don't feel comfortable in, consider that where you work doesn't define you. You don't have to have a dream job to be happy in, and fulfilled in your life. So that's all I wanted to say, I guess. Um, 
I guess that's why one thing why I have separate bullet journals for work. I have a work bullet journal I can link below and for home. And everything in here is personal stuff, including hobbies, including my Hogwarts, which has some aspects of being slightly job-like, um, but other aspects of being something that I just really love. Loved spending the time with the people there and just enjoying my hobby and my um, sort of geeky, nerdy fandom for Harry Potter, um, among other things. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you found that useful, go ahead and like the video. And uh, if you are interested in anything else I have, don't forget to subscribe because I uh, publish videos three times a week and look forward to those. Love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.